joint operation underway by the Hawks and Bidvest Protea Coin. The suit now on an alleged kingpin behind the theft of fuel from Transnet's national pipeline. Let's bring in our reporter, Govan Whittles, who's at the scene and arrest already made. Govan, what's going on here? Thank you, Tembekile. I'm joining you from Emelaseni. This is the property owned by the 35-year-old man, the alleged kingpin of a syndicate that's been targeting Transnet's fuel pipeline. This arrest today happened after two men who are his alleged accomplices were arrested over the weekend, caught red-handed with 8,000 litres of fuel um, that's alleged to belong to, to Transnet um, in a fuel tanker. And this happens after a partnership between the Hawks and Bidvest Protea Coin. Bidvest Protea Coin started guarding the pipeline about three months ago. This is one of their most significant arrests since they've taken over. The Hawks are on scene, the South African police, as well as Bidvest Protea Coin. And we've come here to not only see the facility where the alleged stolen fuel is processed, um, but also to see the assets that will be seized uh, by the police in this operation. Let's take a look around right now. You see behind me is one of the fuel tankers that they didn't manage to take. should note that when we arrived here, all the doors were open, all the windows were open, um, and it does look like the people knew the police were coming for the search and seizure operation. These are the suspects. They're just workers who were found um, on this man's property, uh, who, of course, we can't name until he appears in court. But here's the more interesting stuff, uh, where they appear to be processing some of the alleged stolen fuel. And you can clearly see the facilities to store, process, and then resell some of the fuel um, that the police, the Hawks, and Bidvest Protea Coin allege this man is running a syndicate for. Take a look inside this small facility. Those are all storage drums, storage tanks, um, and this facility clearly had people working in it just a few hours ago before the police arrived here. But this isn't the extent of this man's operation. Uh, you'd notice that there are a number of other trucks um, and other things on the property as well. And he's built a number of buildings um, on this property. It's a small holding of sorts, which has a number of vehicles. Uh, you see more storage facilities right here. And what we'll endeavor to do is take you inside the suspect's property uh, to show you exactly uh, the kind of lifestyle that he was living, uh, allegedly off the proceeds of crime. So right now, as I said, we're in Emalathleni and the syndicate has been under investigation by the Hawks' intelligence unit as well as Bidvest Protea Coin, uh, which says that they've already confiscated a number of tankers in connection with the targeting of Transnet's fuel pipeline. Remember that Minister Pravin Gordon had said a few months ago uh, that Transnet had lost an estimated 100 million litres of fuel. Uh, which had been stolen by these syndicates which appear to be targeting the pipeline. Now let's go into the property where the suspect stays and you'd see once we get around the corner that he was clearly living a life of opulence. The police are already here and when they arrived I mentioned that they found the doors open and the windows open and everyone had left the property but they didn't manage to take at least these three cars um, and it does look like there was a few things that were taken from the property. This is just the backyard, um, which clearly has the sign of someone who was living a life of luxury. The suspect only 35 years old. And the extent of this syndicate and exactly what else they were involved in is not yet clear. Of course, we've seen some coal tipping trucks that are also on his property, but the man is now in custody. Uh, he was nabbed in a dramatic operation in Pretoria East uh, after being lured to Pretoria from Emelathleni uh, by this joint operation by the Hawks and Bidvest Protea Coin. We'll be speaking to the Hawks a little bit later to get the full extent of uh, the significance of this bust, but it does look like they've made a significant dent in the fight against the attacks on the Transnet fuel pipeline. Kevin Russell's giving us some breaking news this afternoon, confirming the arrest of a man from Emalasheni in Pumalanga in connection with the theft, basically, of fuel from Transnet. We'll come back to Govan. Let's show you some of the images as an arrest happened in Pretoria East. This, I believe, happened earlier, so you can imagine the distance. Govan reporting from the property in uh, Emalasheni, which is in Pumalanga. But arrests being made today 
in Pretoria East, Gervin was telling us that as Hawks officials souped on that property, no one was there, at least as far as the residences or residents are concerned, but we saw uh, some of the workers who are alleged to have been involved in this illicit fuel operation, they're laying on the ground, they too seemingly being arrested. Police officers will want to hear more about what they knew about what was going on. Govan, I'm told you're back with us now. Tell us how long this is suspected to have been going on, because it looks like a, a large operation. It is a large operation, but the substantive work that was done uh, by the uh, combination of um, the Bidvest Protea coin, uh, as well as uh, the Hawks' Directorate of Priority Crimes Investigative uh, Unit, has been going on for about three months. We spoke to the Chief Operations Officer of uh, the Bidvest Protea coin just a short while ago, who explained that not only was this one of the more significant busts, but this is something that culminated from an extensive operation they ran in Frieda um, in the Free State. And essentially what happened once uh, they found the other two men uh, with the 8,000 litres of fuel that they suspect was stolen from Transnet uh, is that uh, they then put them under surveillance. And through that they were able to make significant breakthroughs. Um, and uh, we'll, of course, try to speak to you now. I do see Mr. Val de Val over there who has agreed to speak to us uh, about the extent of their uh, protecting of the Transnet pipeline. Mr. de Val, thank you so much for, for your time as the Chief Operations Officer of Bidvest Protea Coin. I was saying to our viewers that, obviously, uh, Protea Coin had been guarding the National Transnet Pipeline for about three months. Uh, but uh, this does seem to be one of your more significant breakthroughs in nabbing this alleged kingpin. Yes, it's definitely, and, and this is the way that uh, we're going to take this uh, war forward uh, in conjunction with uh, different uh, State Departments, SAS, in, uh, uh, DPCI, and other departments, uh, taking hands and fight this crime as, as one strong force. What kind of cooperation happened in, in, in terms of Bidvest Protea Coin and the Hawks and, and SARS, and what kind of equipment were you able to offer which made the difference? Well, we've got state-of-the-art equipment uh, on the line that acts as early warning. Uh, I can tell you the, the, the public, most of them are fed up for crime. They all phone us as soon as they see sp suspicious vehicles. So if these criminals go close to a, a, the line, I can promise you that 99.9% .9 will know about it. We react, we react in different ways. Uh, uh, marked vehicles, unmarked vehicles, helicopters, drones, uh, and, and we will catch them. And when we catch them, in conjunction with DPCI, we take them to court and the uh, judge will determine their future. How, how long is the pipeline and, and what, uh, what is the scale of the operation that you have to roll out? Obviously, I understand there's some information you can't share uh, which would compromise the way that you look after it. But is it a, na a nationwide project that you're running here? Yes, it's a nationwide. We've been... Uh, uh, we've been appointed to protect the whole of the pipeline. Uh, the, the pipeline is, is quite a distance. Unfortunately, I'm not going to give uh, uh, amounts and, 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 and kilometers here, but, but it's quite a distance, and, and uh, we're ready for the war. Thank you so much. That's Mr. Val de Val. He's the Chief Operations Officer uh, for Bidvest Protea Coin. On the scene, of course, also the guys uh, from the Hawks, the investigating officers. Let's go back into the storage yard, um, which is currently being uh, searched by the members of the Hawks. They've taken an inventory of most of the stuff that's here already. That's why they've given us the go-ahead uh, to broadcast this live after conducting most of the work um, and ensuring that the case itself remains intact. This is, of course, uh, a matter of carefully making sure that they follow the process um, so that there can't be any trip-ups uh, once they actually have, uh, um, once they actually have uh, the suspect in custody. Once the arrest was effected, uh, they were carefully reading rights that were prepared. Uh, the suspect had arrived at the SARS offices with his advocate uh, for another meeting, and after he arrived for that meeting uh, is when they actually stopped him in the street. This operation was conducted in conjunction with the Gauteng Traffic Police, and after stopping him, uh, they were able to read him his rights, take him into custody, seize the vehicle that he was in as well. And here I see we have the Hawks' uh, spokesperson, Mr. Pilani Nkwalase, he's a colonel. Uh, he's the one that's been leading this operation from the Hawks' side. Colonel Nkwalase, 
It does look like this is a big operation, but does this represent a real breakthrough? The guy is 35 years old. How do you know he's really an alleged kingpin? Well, uh, firstly, uh, we believe that we have uh, succeeded in arresting the suspect and he is expected to appear in court tomorrow. And remember, ours is to secure him for court attendance and the court will then, that process will then prove whether the suspect is guilty. But we are, we are um, really positive about the work that we have done and of course uh, credit to the multidisciplinary approach as you have seen when we arrested the alleged uh, kingpin, as you rightfully put it. Uh, in, in, in Pretoria, we have, you know, we had amongst us, you know, the saturation unit from the Gauteng Traffic Police, who were also forming part of the operation, as well as uh, Bidvest uh, uh, Protea Coin, who are the custodians in ensuring that the security is, is provided to the Transnet pipeline, which is a national pipeline, and uh, it's also uh, part of the national key point. And the, the kingpin, uh, the charges that he will be facing in court tomorrow here in Whitbank is the charges of uh, a damage to uh, essential infrastructure. And of course, this follows the arrest that was made over the weekend, uh, where two suspects were arrested here. And uh, they allegedly were involved, uh, they were in fact in possession of uh, suspected stolen uh, property, which is the fuel that was allegedly stolen in Frieda, in Free State. You can imagine. Uh, so basically, they were under surveillance from here, from the point when they left here to Frieda, and even when that crime was committed in Frieda and back here. So they were arrested here, and yesterday they appeared uh, in, in, in Frieda. The petrol that was seized. In, in that incident is close to 8,000 litres of fuel and the cost is over 221,000 uh, uh, rand. So that is the charges and of course you would, you would know now that it is public knowledge uh, that last year alone uh, the, the, the Transnet has, lo has lost over 100 uh, a million uh, worth of, of, of fuel which is close to 8.5 uh, 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 litres of, 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 of um, uh, fuel that they have lost uh, last year alone. So, and that is basically a public knowledge. And we believe that this formula is, is working for us, where we have an integrated approach, where various stakeholders come together in ensuring this arrest. And we had to be quick from uh, Pretoria when we arrested the suspect. Let's just get into some of the details of the arrest because it happened in, in such quick succession. Uh, the events happened in such quick succession and it seemed to be uh, well planned out. So was it always the plan to arrest him in Pretoria and then fly him in a helicopter to this location? Well, the arrest was effected for uh, various reasons in Pretoria, and, uh, but then because we needed to be here as quickly as possible to ensure that we search the property because we have a, a, a search warrant uh, which was uh, uh, provided by the competent courts and we, and we wanted to ensure that we secure any exhibits that can be found here for, 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 for the court. So we had to uh, leave there with Chopper and be here as quick as possible and as you can see now we have these other suspects that have been arrested. Most of them are for a national and the charges would be related to being uh, undocumented in, in the country. That is why, and of course, these ones are um, employees of, uh, of the suspect. So that investigation is also ongoing. Some of the stuff that you found here includes uh, storage facilities for fuel. Uh, there are small containers that, which appear to contain fuel as well. There's one... Um, fuel tanker, uh, which was clearly being worked on, its wheels are not on at the moment. But it does appear, Colonel Nkwalase, that not all of what you were expecting to find is actually here. The fact that the doors were open, the windows were open when we arrived, seems to signal that they may have been tipped off. Do you believe that's the case and that they may have gotten away with some stuff? Well, uh, investigation, well, well I, I, I doubt that that's the case. 
I, I, I differ on that one. But of course, once we have set, once we have actually gone through what we have with the investigating officer, with the investigating team, we will establish what uh, perhaps is uh, going on here. But we are happy we have arrested the, the alleged kingpin. And of course, uh, there's, we found even more undocumented uh, in, individuals that will take its course as well. And any other um, issues that are found uh, will be investigated. Uh, it's still fresh to know to say that uh, this, uh, they may have been tipped off, but uh, we have arrested the, the suspect and there's more people that are arrested here. If they were tipped off, I doubt we would find uh, undocumented sus suspects here. But of course, uh, investigation will, 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 will tell us all of that, um, but I'm of a different view. So this case obviously goes to court tomorrow. It'll be the first appearance of the suspect. Thereafter, we'll be able to name him. But based on the initial arrest and what you see, do you believe that you could find a further breakthrough here uh, and get more members of the alleged syndicate? We are making a, a breakthrough. And as we have said earlier, um, in a space of about uh, uh, three uh, months, we have arrested uh, now a total of 49 uh, suspects with the three, the two that were arrested over the weekend and the kingpin, the alleged kingpin that is arrested now. And that is basically the, the national picture when it comes to essential uh, damage to infrastructure, when it comes to uh, 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 pipeline. So we believe that we are making great success. As you would know, that this there's an even higher impact on the crime. Um, last year alone, we have a total of over 102 two million of fuel that was allegedly uh, stolen from, from Transnet. So uh, we also urge the farming communities, we also urge the public uh, to act positively when it comes to uh, acti such activities. They must report to the police. As you would know, the police cannot be everywhere every time. And therefore, we also rely on the information provided to us by the law-abiding citizens. And we are quite happy with the success we've had so far. Thank you so much. That's Colonel uh, Pilani Nkwalase from the Hawks. Um, he's the one that's been speaking on behalf of the Hawks uh, during this operation. And, uh, we'll end it here by showing you some more of the trucks uh, that uh, were um, that are currently being seized uh, by the Hawks uh, in this special operation that's targeting a syndicate that's alleged to be behind the theft of fuel from Transnet's national pipeline, a fuel that amounts to a worth of over 100 million. Earlier I had said 100 liters is actually worth 100 million uh, rand. Um, and the exact uh, total of the goods that have been seized here during this operation will likely be giving to us as the police wrap up. It looks like they're done with their inventory. They're still checking off a few boxes. The, the suspect himself is currently being interviewed by the Hawks, but we'll show you visuals of that um, as soon as we can. But for now, Tembi, it's back to you. We'll come back to you in the next hour to get an update of what's going on now. That operation today, at least one arrest made and more people likely to be arrested today in a clampdown on the theft of fuel from the Transnet pipeline system.